تفت فؤادك الايام فتا بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه فاذا هو زاهق ولكم الويل مما تصفون اكيد was pioneered by الشيخ الاسلام ابن تيميه رحمه الله تعالى Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, I have to make one thing very clear. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Hafiz Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, these ulama we respect. We give them all due respect because of their knowledge, because of their status inside the deen. But when it comes to some issues related with aqaid, they have stumbled in many places and the ulama of the time and after have made the ummah aware of this. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah regarding tafweed, which is the true creed of the scholars. scholars and the pious predecessors, he has said in his Dar'u Ta'ala the Naql, in volume 1, page 25, 205, sorry, that tafweed, i.e. to consign the mean to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this aqidah is min sharri aqwal al bid'a wal ilhad, that this is the most worst statements of the Ahl bid'a and those people who are heretics. This is what Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned regarding the true creed of the Salaf. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Lahu alhamdul hasan wa thana'u al-jameel wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah yaqulu al-haqqa wa huwa yahdi al-sabeel wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyana Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters This is the uh, third episode uh, or the third part responding to the claims Hanafi Fiqh Channel have presented What you have just seen right now is uh, Sheikh Muhammad Yasir Hadani wa iyahu ila sawa'i sirat. May Allah guide him and myself to the straight path. He has claimed that Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was the uh, one who brought this belief at tafwil and that this was not the madhab al salaf. Um, the tafwil was madhab al salaf. And Ibn Taymiyyah's claim that Tafwid was not Madhab Salaf, that Ibn Taymiyyah was incorrect uh, in it. Inshallah ta'ala, I hope bi idhnillah al kareem in this sit to shine some light to the listeners that uh, Shaykh Muhammad Yasir is either unaware of truly what Madhab Salaf is regarding the names and the attributes of Allah, he's either unaware of it and he is ignorant of it, or he's deliberately making himself ignorant of it. They are both as bad as each other. So inshallah ta'ala, what is the reality of tafwid? What does tafwid mean? Haqiqatu tafwid. Tafwid, in a nutshell, it means that you surrender the meaning to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And that you say that the meaning of this is in the hands of Allah. Allah knows what is meant by it. In a nutshell, what it means is that these characteristics and attributes which are in the Qur'an, um, they are just mere letters. We just read them the same way we read the word Qaf, Noon, Hamim. It's Mujarrad Huruf. It's just mere letters. We recite them. We do not know what's on behind it. This is what is intended by the meaning of tafwil. As Allah said in the Quran, فَسَتَذْكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Or, وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأُفَوِّضُ is what's used here. What does it mean? A أَتَّكِلُ عَلَيْهِ I rely this, I surrender this matter to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Also in the hadith of Bara ibn Azib, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, 
ثم قل ساي اللهم أسلمت وجهي إليك وفوضت أمري إليك What does it mean وفوضت أمري إليك It means أي رددته إليك I bring my matters back to you So it means to leave If the Arabs they say this woman or the fuqaha they say imra'atun mufawwida What do they mean by that? Ay lam yusam lam yusamma laha mahran It's a woman a dowry was not mentioned for her That's what it means linguistically So when they say that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's characteristics we do tafwid of it what is meant by it is al iman bi alfadiha وَالتَّرْكِ التَّعَرُّضِ لِمَعْنَاهَا Then we believe or we believe in the letters but we don't know the meaning of it so it is حُرُوفٌ letters لا معانية لها no meaning is in it ولا حقائق no reality to it So this concept of having things towards Allah's characteristics and attributes and not liking to affirm it is a methodology in which these modern time Asha'ira have inherited from Jahm ibn Safwan. And inshallah ta'ala in my upcoming uh, videos, inshallah ta'ala, I hope bi uh, to shine some light to showing that the Asha'ira of this time that we live are of the belief of the Jahmiyyah. Um, Al-Imam uh, Al-Bukhari rahimahullah have his book Khalq Af'al Al-Ibad Wal-Raddi uh, Wal-Raddu Ala Al-Jahmiyyati Wa Ashab Al-Ta'atil Al-Imam Al-Bukhari rahimahullah he brings the, uh, a story from his, his chain of narration uh, up to Abu Nu'aym Al-Balkhi He says Kana rajulun min ahli maru min ahli maru sadiqan li jahm There was a man from the uh, city of Maru, who was a very close to Jahm ibn Safwan, he was very close. ثُمَّ قَطَعَهُ وَجَفَاهُ And they, he, dis- he boycotted him and they lost friendship. فَقِيلَ لَهُ They asked him, لِمَا جَفَوْتَهُ Why have you disconnected yourself and, and, and boycotted him and left him? He said, جَاءَ مِنْهُ مَا لَا يُحْتَمَلْ It has come from him that which I cannot tolerate anymore. And now he tells his story. قَرَأْتُ يَوْمًا آيَةَ كَذَا He said, one day I recited a verse. The narrator, Yahya ibn Ayyub, he said, I forgot what verse it was. But he said, when he read the ayah, مَا كَانَ أَضْرَفَ مُحَمَّدًا um, Who's more smarter than Muhammad? صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ فَاحْتَمَلْتُهَا He said, I tolerated it. ثُمَّ قَرَأَ سُورَةُ الطَّاهَا Then he recited سُورَةُ الطَّاهَا فَلَمَّا قَالَ When he recited the ayah الرحمن على العرش استوى He said أَمَا وَاللَّهِ by Allah لَوْ وَجَدْتُ سَبِيلًا إِلَى حَكِّهَا لَحَكَكْتُهَا مِنَ المصحف. If I was to find a way to peel, to rip out from the Mus'haf this verse الرحمن على العرش استوى He said I would have done it فَاحْتَمَلْتُهَا He said, I tolerated it. ثُمَّ قَرَأَ سُورَةُ قَصَصْ Then he recited a verse in Surah Qasas. فَلَمَّا انْتَهَى إِلَى ذِكْرِ مُوسَى When he finished, uh, uh, or when he came to the, uh, sorry, when he came to the story of Nabi Allah Musa, he said, مَا هَذَا What is this? ذَكَرَ قِصَّتَهُ فِي مَوْضِعٍ فَلَمْ يُتِمَّهَا He mentions his story in a place and he doesn't complete it. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَهَا هُنَا And then he mentions it here. فَلَمْ يُتِمَّهَا And he doesn't finish it. ثُمَّ رَمَى Then he threw بِالْمُصْحَفِ مِنْ حِجْرِهِ from his sh- He threw the Mus'haf from uh, his uh, leg or his... Um, what's this called? He threw it from his thigh. بِرِجْرِهِ with his leg. فَوَقَعَ It fell on the ground. And the narrator said, فَوَثَبْتُ عَلَيْهِ I fell on him. I jumped on him. I jumped on him. So this methodology of having something towards Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's names and attributes in negating it, in hating these verses, is a methodology um, in which is inherited from the Jahmiyyah. From the Jahmiyyah. Um, so tafwil 
is the methodology of the Jahmeen, uh, in which it has no place in the methodology of the Salaf al Salih. The Salaf were never known to do Ta'atil, or they were never known to do Tafwil. The Salaf, what was known from them was Ithbat al Sifat, is to affirm those characteristics. Because it, if you look at the Quran, the majority of the verses in the Quran are characteristics, names, and attributes of Allah. And then a person will say to you that the, the most mentioned thing in the Quran is not known, it's just mere letters and words, we just recite them. That it goes against why Allah has sent down the Quran. Allah wa ta'ala sent the Quran down so we can ponder on the Quran. Every verse that you recite, you see at the end of it, Allah mentions a name. Allah mentions an attribute that comes out of that name. Allah wa ta'ala talks about characteristics in just about every verse in the Quran. Just about every verse. What the most mentioned becomes unknown, it has no meaning to it, it's just mere letters and words that are read. That goes against the hikmah of Nuzul Al-Quran and why the Quran was set down. I'm going to now quickly go over names of the Salaf. I can't go over their quotes and their statements because I mentioned that in the previous previous episode. The Salaf Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een they affirmed Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's characteristics. The Sahabas, the Tabi'een, the Atba'uhum, the Atba'u Tabi'een, the students of the Tabi'een. وَمَنْ بَعَدَهُمْ And after them who came مِنْ أَئِمَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ All of them are upon what? إِثْبَاتُ الْأَسْمَاءِ وَالصِّفَاتِ وَالْإِيمَانُ بِمَعَانِيهَا Affirming Allah's names, attributes, believing in its meanings وَحَقَائِقِهَا And its reality, believing it. That is what the Salaf were upon. I quoted last time the statement of Imam Tirmidhi رحمه الله. Tirmidhi is not the only one who said that. Ibn Abdul Barr رحمه الله he said something which I, I believe it should be read. He mentions this in his Kitab at Tamheed. In the sixth volume, page 135, so, sorry, 134 to 135, in his Kitab at Tamheed, which is the Sharah of Muwatta Imam Malik. He says, Ahlu Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah are Mujmi'una, they are unanimously agreed upon. This matter is Ijma', it's a matter which Ahlu Sunnah have agreed upon. It's not a matter Ibn Taymiyyah introduced. It's a matter which is unanimously agreed upon. الإقرار, which is to affirm الواردة, the characteristics that have been transmitted, all of them, كلها في القرآن والسنة, in the Quran and the Sunnah, والإيمان بها, and to believe in it. وحملها, and to take it at على الحقيقة, to take it at its literal meaning. You see, لا على المجاز, not in its metaphorical uh, meaning. إلا أنهم لا لا يكيفون شيئا من ذلك. Except أهل السنة, they do not give any resemblance or how from those characteristics. ولا يحيدون فيه صفة محصورة. And they do not uh, narrow it down to a particular characteristics. أهل السنة don't do that. وأما أهل البدع وأما أهل البدع. As for the people of innovation, such as who? والجهميه والمعتزلة والخوارج all of them كلها all of them فكلهم ينكرونها they all negated فكلهم all of them ينكرها they negated ولا and they do not يحمل ولا يح ولا يحمل شيئا منها على الحقيقة and none of them carry those characteristics and attributes of Allah at its literal meaning ويزعمون and they claim أن من أقر بها that anybody who affirms those names and attributes uh, biha mushabbih that he's a mushabbih they, ask, they say that anyone who says Allah's hand I will affirm it Allah's characteristics which he has mentioned about himself Allah is more aware of his characteristics than anyone else we will affirm his characteristics for him min ghayri takyifin wa la tamthilin wa min ghayri ta'atilin wa la tahrif they refer to them as mushabbiha unjustly naam inta kalamu his speech is finished so I want you to really ponder on the speech of that great Imam Ibn Abdul Barr al-Maliki rahimahullah. Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Abdul Barr was before Ibn Taymiyyah. And he said this statement, statement before Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. So Ibn Taymiyyah wasn't the first. Al-Imam al-Khatib al-Baghdadi 
as Imam al-Dhahabi brought in his seerah ala min nubala, he clearly states that the madhab al-salaf is what? Wa amma al-kalamu fi al-sifati, fa inna ma ruya minha fi al-sunani, al-sihahi, madhab al-salaf, ithbatuha wa ijrauha, ala zahiriha, wa nafi al-kayfiyya, wa al-tashbihi anha. The madhab al-salaf is to affirm, and to affirm what? Affirm its meaning. Go over its apparent, uh, by its apparent, to negate its how, and any resemblance. Any resemblance. Also the same was transmitted to us from uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. And Imam al-Dhahabi in his kitab al-Ulu li Ali al-Ghaffar. And what do you call it? Hafiz ibn Kathir, rahimahullah. Ibn Kathir said, وَإِنَّمَا نَسْلُكُ فِي هَذَا الْمَقَامِ مَذْهَبُ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ مَالِكُ وَالْأَوْزَعِي وَالثَّوْرِ وَالْلَيْثُ بْنُ سَعَدْ وَالشَّافِعِي وَأَحْمَدْ وَإِسْحَاقْ ibn Rahuyata wa ghayrihim min a'imma al-muslimina qadiman wa haditha wa huwa imraruha kama jaat min ghayri takifin wa la tashbihin wa la ta'atil This is not something which Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was first to say. Another point inshaAllah ta'ala that I want to stand over regarding uh, what the brother uh, Shaykh Muhammad Yasir said which again is um, not knowing the reality of who Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was. Even that though he himself has affirmed that Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim are ulama. Even that though they don't require recognition from the likes of you or myself. Ibn Taymiyyah's imama and his status, his rank, it was witnessed by those who are more noble than you and I. But all we can say is, وَشَهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا A witness of those who disagree with him as a witness for him. And Ibn Taymiyyah, it's not the first time that his opponent agreed to his knowledge. A lot of them have. And they saw si'atu ilmihi, how vast his knowledge was. The poet, he said, أَتَهَجُّوهُ وَلَسْتَ لَهُ بِكُفْءٍ فَشَرُّكُمَا لِخَيْرِكُمَ الْفِدَاءِ You oppose Ibn Taymiyyah and you say that which you say about him. But there is no one amongst you who you could bring out that is equal to like the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. A person who spent all his life in spreading this knowledge Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a. But what I wanted to say is, before I mention a bit about who Ibn Taymiyyah was and the praises that he got from the ulama of his time and even after him, um, I just wanted to correct the brother in uh, what he had said. The brother, he had uh, quoted or mentioned the book written by Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Dar uh, Ta'arud al Aqli wa Naqal. But he misquoted uh, or he even he incorrectly said the name of the book. He called it Dar'u Ta'arudu Dar'u Ta'arudu Al-Aql Dar'u Ta'arudu Al-Naql Dar'u Ta'arudu Al-Naql Something like that is what he said. The book isn't called Dar'u Ta'arudu Al-Naql but rather it's called Dar'u Ta'arudu Al-Aql wa Al-Naql and Ibn Taymiyyah authored that book in refutation to a person you praise Fakhruddin Al-Razi Ibn Taymiyyah refuted him in that book it's a book Ibn al-Qayyim, he said in his Nuniyyah, Al-Kafiyyatu al-Shafiyya fi al-Intisari li firqati al-Najiyya. Ibn al-Qayyim praised that book and this is what he said about it. He said, فَقْرَأْ تَصَانِيفَ الْإِمَامِ حَقِيقَةً شَيْخَ الْوُجُودِ الْعَالِمِ الرَّبَّانِ أَعْنِ أَبَا الْعَبَّاسِ أَحْمَدَ ذَلِكَ الْبَحْرَ الْمُحِيطَ بِسَائِرِ الْخَلْجَانِ وَقْرَأْ كِتَابَ الْعَقْلِ وَالنَّقْلِ الَّذِي مَا فِي الْوُجُودِ لَهُ نَذِيرُ ثَانٍ وَكَذَا فَتَاوَاهُ فَأَخْبَرَنِ الَّذِي أَضْحَى عَلَيْهَا دَائِمَ الطَّوَفَانِ هي في الوراء مبثوثة معلومة تبتاع بالغالي من الأثمان The line I want from it is وَقْرَأْ رِيد كِتَابَ الْعَقْلِ وَالنَّقْلِ الَّذِي Read the book تَأْرْءُ تَعَرْضُ الْعَقْلِ وَالنَّقْلِ Read it آه. ما في الوجود There's no likes of it له نذير ثاني there's, the, there's no likes of it on the face of this earth there's nothing like it on the face of this earth after the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلِذَلِكَ some of the salaf, some of the, sorry, some of the ulama was narrated that some of the books of Ibn Taymiyyah, they would swap it for the sharah of Sahih Muslim of Nawawi, they would swap it for the likes of his book Al-Jawabu Sahih liman baddala deen al-Masih or they would swap it for his book Dar'u Ta'arud al-Aqli wa al-Naqal they would sell their book, Sharh al-Sahih Muslim, in order to get the book of Ibn Taymiyyah to use it. 
Um, but this just shows you that his book, it contains the Quran and the Sunnah. And that's what he's explaining. And Ibn Taymiyyah, he had, rahimahullah, he had uh, ability from Allah wa ta'ala to see the innovation at its minute and to destroy it from its roots. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'a. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to quote uh, some of the praises that were put towards him. Because I can't go through it. There's a book which, which I advise every one of you to go to. It's called, it's called Ar-Raddul Wafir. Written by Nasiruddin al-Dimishqi. This book has 300 scholars. 300 scholars who praise Ibn Taymiyyah and call him by the name of Shaykh al-Islam. I also request from every one of you, inshallah ta'ala, to go to that book. Ar-Raddul Wafir. Maktabat al-Islami has published it. Go to that book. 300 scholars had praised Ibn Taymiyyah in it and they refer to him as Shaykh al-Islam. The definition of Shaykh al-Islam, Nasiruddin al-Dimishqi, he mentions it in that book of his Ar-Raddul Wafir. I advise every student of knowledge who can read the Arabic language to go to that book and look at what is the definition of Shaykh al-Islam. When is a person called Shaykh al-Islam? Who is qualified to be called Shaykh al-Islam? 300 scholars have given him that title that his name is Shaykh al-Islam. So look at that definition of what Shaykh al-Islam is and then you would realize what was said. Ahadu talamidhihi al-kibar One of his great noble students of his none other than al-imam al-dhahbi rahimahullah this is what he said about him. He said Nashaa al-shaykh al-taqiyu al-deen fi tasawun tamin wa afafin wa ta'alluhid wa ta'abbudin wa iqtisadin fi al-malbasi wa al-ma'kal wa kana yahzur al-madarisa والمحافل في صغره ويناظر ويفحم الكبار ويأتي بما يتحير منه أعيال البلد في العلم. He said Ibn Taymiyyah he grew up in a protected, completely protected household. He grew up upon chastity. He grew upon, upon righteousness, worshipping of Allah. He was balanced in his clothing and what he ate. He wasn't extravagant. He used to come to the gatherings and s from a very young age. He used to debate and argue and he would silent his opponents. He would come with matters in which it will baffle uh, those of his time. فَأَفْتَى He gave fatwa, rahimahullah, وَلَهُ تِسْعَةَ عَشَرَ سَنَةً When he was only 19 years of age, he was given fatwa. بَلْ أَقَلْ Rather, he was younger than that, if Dhabi says. وَشَرَعَ فِي الْجَمْعِ وَالتَّأْلِيفِ He then embarked on compiling and authoring. And he put his mind down into busying himself in this. His father died. His father was from the great scholars of the Hanbali Madhab. His son, Ibn Taymiyyah, sat down to teach the circles of his father and to carry on from where his father left off. And he was only 21 years of age at that time. واشتهر أمره his matter became famous وباعود صيته في العالم his reputation his recognition it spread and it went far in the world وأخذ في التفسير he then embarked on taking on to the tafsir of Allah and the kitab أيام الجمعة على ال... he then started sorry to teach the tafsir in on Friday on the Friday uh, in the chair and he would read it من حفظه from his memory فَكَانَ يُورِدُ الْمَجْلِسَ He would narrate in one gathering وَلَا يَتَلَعْثَمُ And he would not stutter. Once he was teaching, the beginning he was teaching Hanbali fiqh and then after that he embarked on teaching the tafsir and teaching the book of Allah, the Fridays. He would sit in the chair and he would read it from his memory. No, let, no papers or nothing with him. And he would not وَلَا يَتَلَعْثَمُ He would not um, stutter in his speech. وَكَانَ يُورِدُ الدَّرْسَ بِتُؤَدَةٍ وَصَوْتٍ جَهْوَرِيٍّ فَصِيحٍ He would transmit the information whilst calm and a very far and loud pitch voice. فصيح eloquent. وَكَانَ آيَةً فِي الذكاء. He was a miracle from Allah in terms of his memory. وَالسُرْعَةُ للدراك. And how fast he, he perceived things. رَأْسًا فِي مَعْرِفَةِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ He was the head in the comprehension of the book of Allah and the Sunnah. 
and matters which scholars differed in. He knew it. Bahran fin naqliyat. He was an ocean in transmission of the quotes of the Salaf. Hmm. At his time, he was the single person. He stood out from everybody else. He was alone. Ilman in terms of knowledge. Wazuddan in terms of how aesthetic he was. Washaja'atan in terms of how his courage was. Wasakha'an in terms of how he was in giving. Wa'amran bil ma'rufi. And in terms of calling to good. Wa'nahyan anil munkari and prohibiting the evil. Wa'kathratu tasanifa. And how much books he had authored. Wa'kad qara'a, wa'hassala, wa'bara'a fil hadithu wal fiqh. He read, he gained, he passed and went far in hadith and fiqh. He became the right person to teach and to give fatwa. He was only 17, 27 years of age. He went far in tafsir. And he went far in usul. And compiling the fields of the religion. Usuliha its fundamentals, wafuruiha its sub branches, wadikiha in its detailed ones, wajil everything. Fa in zukira tafsiru. The Habi said, if tafsir was mentioned, fa wahamilu liwaiha, he was the one carrying the banner for it. Wa in uddal fukaha, if the fukaha were listed, fa huwa mujtahidhumul mutlak, he was the mujtahid, the unrestricted mujtahid, who could do ijtihad on any madhab, on any, on, 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 on any issue. وَإِنْ حَذَرَ الْحُفَاظِ If the people of hadith whose memory was strong, they were to come, نَطَقَ وَخَرَسُوا He would speak and they would be silent. وَسَرَدَ وَأَبْلَسُوا وَاسْتَعْنَ وَأَفْلَسُوا وَإِنْ سُمِّيَ الْمُتَكَلِّمُونَ فَهُوَ فَرْدُهُمْ وَإِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُهُمْ That's what Dhabi said about him. Ibn al-Qayyim رحمه الله Ibn al-Qayyim رحمه الله He said, حَذَرْتُ شَيْخَ الْإِسْلَامِ ابْنُ تَيْمِيَةَ مَرَّةً he said, one day I came to Ibn Taymiyyah. Salla subha, he prayed salat al-subh. Thumma jalasa yadhkurullah. He sat down to mention Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and do his adhkar. Ila qareeb min muntasif al-nahar. Until the sun just about to rise. Half the day basically. Half the, the, the day started. Thumma altafata ilayya. He looked at Ibn al-Qayyim. Wa qala he said to him, Hadhi ghadwati. This is my breakfast. Ah. Walaw lam atagadda al-ghada. If I don't have my breakfast in the morning, my ability goes. Or a speech close to that Dhabi said. Ibn al-Qayyim said, sorry. He once said to Imam al-Dhahab, Ibn al-Qayyim. Ibn Taymi one day said to Ibn al-Qayyim, I never leave off the remembrance of Allah. لا لأستعد بتلك الراحة راحة لذكر آخر أو كلاما قريبا هذا معناه. he said I never leave off the remembrance of Allah except with the intention of what إجمام نفسي وإراحتها to relax myself in order for me to do something later or to do something like that. he said ربما طالعت على آية. he said ابن القيم said he said that sometimes I may look at a verse one verse الواحدة one مئة تفسير I'll go through a hundred تفسيرات. ثم أسأل الله الفهم and then I ask Allah to give me understanding وأقول I would say يا معلم آدم وإبراهيم علمني oh the teacher of Adam and Ibrahim teach me وكنت أذهب إلى المسجد I would go to the مسجد المهجورة تي ونحوها وأمرغ وجهي في التراب وأسأل الله تعالى وأقول يا معلم إبراهيم علمني and he said I would take my face and I would rub it on the ground humbling himself and I would say oh Allah Teach me the teacher of Ibrahim. That is what was said by Ibn al-Qayyim. Also, Zamlakani. Zamlakani. Ibn Umad, he mentions that Ibn Zamlakani, if he was asked about Ibn Taymiyyah, he would say, he said, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, if he was asked, he would say, An fannin min al-ilm dhanna al-ra'iyu. Any field of the religion, anyone who saw him uh, or heard him, they would think أنه لا يعرف غير ذلك الفن that he doesn't know except that field. وحكم أن he would give a ruling أن أحد لا يعرف مثله. They would give a ruling that no one knows this matter like he does. وكان الفقهاء من سائر الطوائف and the scholars of فق from other different schools of thoughts or مذاهبس إذا جالسوا if they sat with him استفادوا في مذاهبهم منه they would benefit their مذهبس from him. 
ولا يعرف أنه ناظر أحدا and it is never known that he ever debated with somebody فانقطع عنه and the matter disconnected from him ولا تكلم في علم or that he spoke in a matter of the religion من العلوم سوى أن كان من من علوم الشرع أو غيرها إلا فاق فيه أهله it has never happened that he spoke in a knowledge matter whether it is knowledge based on the religion or even outside the religion except he was what except he would go deep into that and he would be from the people of that وَاجْتَمَعَتْ فِيهِ شُرُوطُ الْاجْتِهَادِ the, the conditions of being a mujtahid was present in him عَلَى وَجْهِهَا in its form ذَهَبِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ said إِمَامُ الذَّهَبِ said هُوَ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ أَنْ يُنَبِّهَهُ he said هو أكبر من أن ينبه على سيرته مثلي ابن الذهبي said that ابن تيمية is greater for me to bring to the attention of the people the biography of ابن تيمية فلو حلفت if I swore بين الركن والمقام between مقام إبراهيم and the Kaaba if I was to swear لحلفت I would have sworn أني ما رأيت بعيني that I never saw with my eyes مثله the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah وأنه أن that he ما رأى مثل نفسه that he has never seen anyone uh, anyone like him عماد الدين الواسطي he has a رحلة a little book which is he does he talks about his رحلة uh, it's called التذكرة الاعتبار in which he talks about his journeys and his traveling he praised Ibn Taymiyyah long praising to the extent he swore by Allah's name three times when he was praising Ibn Taymiyyah he said فوالله ثم والله ثم والله three times لم يرى تحت أديم السماء it has never been seen under the sky مثل شيخكم the likes of your teacher ابن تيمية علما in terms of his knowledge وعملا in terms of his implementation وحالا in terms of his situation وخلقا in terms of his character واتباعا in terms of his following of the سنة وكرما in terms of his generosity وقياما in terms of his standing up for what في حق الله in the rights of Allah عند انتهاك حرماته when Allah's rights are being played around with how he stood up for it أصدق الناس عقدا he was the best of people when it came to contract وأصحهم علما وعزما and he was the most correctest person or the most authentic individual when it came to knowledge and decisions آه وأنفذهم وعلاهم في انتصار الحق وقيام همة he was the one who was the greatest in terms of and the highest in giving victory to the haq and to stand for it with aspiration. وَأَسْخَاهُمْ كَفًّا He was the most generous person in terms of giving. وَأَكْمَلُهُمْ And he was the most uh, greatest in terms of implementing what? Oh, following اتِّبَاعًا لِلنَّبِيِّهِ His messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَا رَأَيْنَا We never saw فِي عَصْرِنَا In this time that we lived هَذَا مَنْ تُسْتَجْلَى النُّبُوَّةَ الْمُحَمَّدِيَّةُ وَسُنَنُهَا مِنْ أَقْوَالِهِ That the Prophet has a prophetic tradition, the way it came out on somebody's speech and actions, it's the way it came out on this man, Ibn Taymiyyah. يَشْهَدُ الْقَلْبَ الصَّحِيحِ Anyone who has a correct heart will witness أن هذا هو اتباع حقيقة that that is the correct way of following the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, when he was asked about Ibn Taymiyyah when he met him, they said to him, كيف رأيته? How have you seen him? He said, رأيت رجلا, I saw a man, سائر العلوم بين عيني, all of the knowledge is placed in front of him. يأخذ ما شاء منها, he takes from it whatever he wills, ويترك ما شاء, and he leaves off what he wishes. That's the type of person he's, he was. Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى, he's praising and how he was. It's something which uh, I've done a lecture on it before. And the books have filled it up. Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله, his opponent and those who liked him both agreed on him that he was a alim jihbid, a scholar in his ilm, his amal, in his i'tiqad. Illa what? Except a person who is ill minded, who there's something in his heart towards the madhabu salaf, the methodology of the salaf, and that which Ibn Taymiyyah brought to the eyes of the people. Uh, I conclude there with Nilahi for this episode. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka tu. In his kitab, Tuhfatul Murid. From the country I'm from, Somalia, Tuhfatul Murid is studied, is learned. They teach it. And it's a book that um, gathers information 
that goes against the kitab and the sunnah and the ijma' of the salafis.